Football and coach Samson Siasi has 42 player list. Here's Ayoto Nebalogun with Sports News. Yes, indeed, Super Eagles coach Samson Siasi has invited 42 players to camp for this month's 2017 AFCON qualifying fixture against the Pharaohs of Egypt. Now, the list comprises of 22 home based players and 20 foreign based professionals for the two leg qualifiers. MLS Portland Timber striker Fernando Adi has been handed his first Super Eagles call up in the list. That also includes Victor Moses and Kelechi Ihanacho, including Alex Iwobi. Now, the first of the qualifier will be played on March the 25th in Kaduna, while the return leg will be played on the 29th in Alexandria, Egypt. The home based players are expected at their Abuja training camp on the 6th of this month, while the foreign based players will arrive camp on the 19th of this month. Now, Sunshine coach Samson Nwanel says his team gave a good fight despite the defeat against the newcomers MFM FC in the Nigeria Professional Football League. In his post-match press conference, coach Nwanel said his side will bounce back from that defeat and focus on their next game, that's against FC Ifaiuba on Sunday. Our Sunshine Stars are currently 17th on the MPFL table with just a point from four league games. Well, India has set up a rematch against Nigeria in one of the quarterfinal matches at the IWTF World Team Championship taking place in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Having finished second behind Nigeria in Group F, India clashed again against, or in, India clashed against Hungary in the round of 16. And now the Asian side prevailed over the Europeans with a 3-1 victory. In the group match, India suffered a 3-0 defeat against Nigeria, and the win against Hungary has set up a rematch against the West African Giants. A German sportswear company Adidas has not pulled its sponsorship of the International Association of Athletics Federations, the IWF. Chief Executive Herbert Heiner, however, says the company is in close contact with the IWF and monitoring its response to doping problem in athletics. Hena also welcomed reforms adopted last week at FIFA to help the world football governing body overcome its corruption scandal, saying the brand, along with other sponsors, are working to make sure the reforms are put into practice. And Tyson's Fury promoter Mick Hennessy has confirmed his rematch with Vladimir Klitschko will definitely be his next fight. Hennessy says the bout will happen and is expecting to make an announcement soon. Fury, the WBO and WBA Super World title holder, had earlier this week said he wasn't sure who he would face next. But then Hennessy made it clear that the rematch clause on the contract is still in place and Fury will be facing Klitschko again in his next fight. And that's wrapping sports news. I'm Ayotunde. The rest of the news at 10 continues short. As the migrant crisis worsens, European Council President Donald Tusk has resolved that the only practical solution would be for illegal economic migrants to desist from going to Europe. Mr. Tusk is of the opinion that illegal economic migrants are risking lives and money over nothing. Cynthia Ray has more. Thank you, Mr. Tusk is visiting Greece and Turkey to try to secure agreements on reducing the flow of migrants traveling west. More than 25,000 migrants have been left stranded in Greece in a border controls to the north, raising fears of a humanitarian crisis. Then North Korea has fired six short-range projectiles into the sea. That's hours after the United Nations imposed tough new sanctions. According to analysts, the guided missiles were seen as an act of defiance against the sanctions. Finally, according to a senior United Nations official, at least 50,000 people have been killed in South Sudan's two-year civil war. That's five times the official number given by humanitarian agencies in the early months of the conflict. Thankfully, South Sudan is now making progress after President Salva Kiir asked his sacked deputy to assume his position once again as part of a power-sharing deal. That's the Foreign News Wrap-Up. The News at 10 continues shortly. Thanks a lot, Cynthia. And the main news again. Violence today rocked the Aguiliti area of Lagos, so with four people believed to have died 
just as Governor Akiwumi Ambode ordered the closure of the Mile 12 market. Also today, the police in Kano announced that they have taken the alleged abductor of Ese Ururu into custody. And the Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, today said the NNPC will be unbundled into 30 subsidiaries with effect from next week. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi. Good night.